really get comfortable. Right, we started to see a bit of the vintage Malibuka moustache endgame plays. Aquavino on the high ground as well. Can we start to see some of these teams get into their zone? It's all about these new and up-and-comers holding on to the board now. The space they've solidified almost at triple digits versus the veterans getting used to the lobby. Flowis and Mappy trying to push back against Vadil and Noah Riley. It'll happen again at the lumber yard. I see two different colored arrows here, but it's not going to be as fast as before. The score right now at Logjam Lumber Yard between these two teams is 1-1. One, one. Game one, Flores and Mappy won. Game two, it was No Riley and Vadil to steal it away. This time round, a bit less 50-50. Both teams are gonna get the chance to get some loadouts and a shotgun there for No Riley is huge in terms of how this fight will play out. Which way do you have it going though, Shio? It's the big question. I feel like when it's not fast, Willis and Mappy have the breakdown. When it's sneaky though, right, because it's kind of a mix of both. If Noah Riley gets that first shot, it could be bad for the duel that's hometown is logjam. Yeah, I think Flores and Mappy will definitely want this to be a bit more even, slowing the pace down like it has been so far. But if you allow Noah Riley and Vidil to set that tempo, that's where you can really start to get yourself in trouble. Noah Riley needs to be careful though, right? He Maybe he's a bit eager, trying to claim a bit more land than he can handle. We're just farming things up now. Another fight we've seen play out many times. Game three, though. Saving in Yakpo. Not actually down instantly, which is a good <laughs> start, right? That's uh, one foot in the doorway. But if they want to barge their way through, Bubak and Fury will be the ones standing in that hallway, ready to stop them. This is the perspective of the crazy solo fights. What's happening here? No way Carmi gets that much damage before a knock goes down. Vanya can't miss. He actually, I think he tried to miss there. He just can't miss. This guy actually has a laser beam with a combat SMG. Like we know it's strong, but he's making it look insane. No, he goes down. Another I, game. I, Another I, game I where just, our game winners go down off spawn. I, I, is all the energy, the juice, the electricity just used? in that previous end game is overconfidence, I think. Those 15 eliminations might have just been all their eliminations for the rest of their tournament. There's just no way. With Vanya playing like that, they're, 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 uh, that'd be sad to even see. Look at this site though, Mustache and Malabuka versus Pink and Anas. A big finish onto Pink. Desperation from Anas to get inside the box and Matt's running low for Mustache and Malabuka. Gonna be tough here back and forth, but all they need to do is hold on, shield up, and then go for the shots. It's a full HP on us behind these doors. A beast baring its fangs, wanting to get in and land every shot. This is such an all-out war between these oh teams. Oh my goodness! Did big damage, but it just wasn't enough up against Malabuka and Mustache. Another game going in the favor of these boys. And Pink and Anas, a team who I have such high expectations of, really struggling so far. And once again, Mustache Malabuka, you mentioned it behind the scenes, Levin. Not allowed to breathe in the last endgame. Not allowed to breathe after this fight either. A new team lands right on top of them. They're so aware. Go for those tags and beams and barely even have time to heal. This is the uh, everlasting story of Command Cavern. Seeing these teams fighting out against each other, you see Vino is the one up above. He knows they just fought. He wants the third party. That's how ruthless he is. Realizing the potential for damage. He knows they're down there below. And Vino and Aku, we typically see them up top. I mean, down below, so they're not up top. They're never up top, <laughs> is the point I wanted to make. They're never up top, really. But realizing that there's a chance to take out two Titans, they were instantly up here, ready to third party. Malibuka and Masashto doing well to not give them that space. But Shio is so mad to me, right? Because Mustache yesterday, I kid you not, this is literally just yesterday, a couple hours ago, was playing some practice scrims with Pink. Huh? Yeah, they needed a fill and they decided to play with each other. To go from yesterday, playing on the same team, vibing, chilling, <laughs> having some fun in practice, to coming out today on the grandest stage of them all and battling it out the way they are. That is just such a contrast. <laughs> They're forcing the fight on their side. Pink yeah. and Anas are just receiving a message every single game. And it's not a message they want to be hearing, right? Not at all. You got some angry players, some ruthless players knocking on your door. Oh, this strap from Pnyaya and the Rabbit as well. They were ruthless in that first game and getting on top of the board. 
You look back at how it even started, they were immediately contesting the Joneses. Now they're kind of gone all the way back towards their POI. You mentioned, you know, saving Yapko, they get to be alive this game. Why is that? It's because maybe it's one of these strats where you go for aggression right off the rip, and after that you go with your game plan. So one of the biggest updates when you talk about players adjusting their POIs and where they're on the map, Benji and Savage actually haven't been going to the Collider. They've been here at Tilted Towers. And of course, a very familiar sight for DKS and Bad Sniper. We got Hold up. a big fight taking place though. So we'll pause on that conversation for a moment. Queasy and Hen, another very, very difficult situation for them. Off spawn here at Sleepy Sound, up against Vettel and Low Ticks. We've seen how much they've struggled in these previous couple of games. But can this be a redeeming moment for them? The point that everything started to change in their FNCS story. Or will they just be forced to sit here and posture towards each other for an endless amount of time like some of these fights often are? Well, Vino did the queasy in this last game was just unfair. 300 meters away, landing five or four burst AR shots in a row. But like the burst as well, not just the first rat-a-tat-tat -tat of the two <laughs> shots that come out. It was boom, 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 boom. And this man was almost basically taken out. It's, it's just too much. The big thing about Queasy and Hen specifically as well, right, is that it's structure and power that are there uh, idealized in, in two players, right? Yeah. Queasy being the structure, Hen being the power. Yeah. The structure has gone down first almost every game so early. I think that's one of the reasons they're also struggling. Yeah, you know, anybody that understands the dynamics of this team, as much as Hen is a great player, he very much needs Queasy to give him that direction. And if Queasy's off, their whole game plan, their whole strategy is off. Right, early in the week, playing in the Cash Cup, they had a torrid time, didn't play well whatsoever, and Queasy put it down to not feeling too good, having an off day. But a couple of days later, maybe that off day is not an off week. week. Yeah, you're, you're on my way <laughs> right now. Yeah. Oh man, it's gonna be tough for them to kind of bring it back. You look at Vettel and Lotech specifically too, I think this is one of the teams that might've been scared to maybe have a say, a flavor, a tune of their own inside the FNCS. I feel like they've been followers so far in this last game, Levin. They were taken down. You were talking about Titans. They they were taking down half of them. They're the reason it almost went down to solo. Steady and Cami, I think, collapsed shot it at the same time, raining down more eliminations over and over all the way towards the ninth zone. They look so powerful. Maybe that is feeding their ego, these end game elims towards contesting Hen and Queasy more off spawn. Yeah, I think, you know, that is one of the biggest sort of quantities that even us as casters and analysts can't quantify, right? When you start hitting big shots in endgame, once you start feeling yourself, maybe you start getting <laughs> devious ideas about how you go about the next couple of games. And for Vettel and Lotix, for sure that will be the case. Vettel, someone who has played in previous FNCS finals, always playing with players who seemingly are on the come up in the, Nor the Norwegian scene, not maybe playing with the Norwegian veterans but seemingly finding a way to do well with some of them. Lotix now the newest in that bunch, in that party. And we'll see what they can cook up in the rest of these games. Slowest and Mappy though, over at the log jam. And Mappy oh, taking man. big damage. That, you know, I, I don't think the 200 striker pumps exist, but that felt like one straight on the dome. Goomba stomped with this man inside the box. Slowest now has to be able to keep up with Noah Riley. Gonna be a tall ask, especially inside a fight that should be their home game, their arena, the long drawn out one inside the storm. I feel like though, when you add that storm, when you add too much length, that's where the power, the, the big, just momentous swings in the fight from Noah Riley and Vadil start to become too much to handle. When we talk about fights in the storm, right? We, we talk about it, there's literally a timer on your fight. You know, you have to close on the fight within a certain amount of time. And that added level of pressure, clearly something that they've not been able to handle. Wow. I say that. But in the final moment, they're Flowis with a big pump. I know, like we said, they ain't 200 anymore <laughs> with a striker, but I bet you he would have come 200 right there. A huge shot to take Norrani out and a saving grace for their game. Uh, but Logjam, slow on, pushing out the lumber, pushing out the players towards the zone. I wonder if Mappy's going to be able to just bring it back. That specific duo needs so much going for them in organized structure. Scramming Hellfire as well right now. Sanctuary they've driven this far. Reese, what do you have to say about this? 
Look, we've seen a bunch of fights going on so far down in the cavern. And one of the things that's always been in contention is who is going to be grabbing the vault? Well, it's not Aqua and Vino this game. Tripper and Thomas CHD are actually set up with the two launch pads from here. But this team ends up ro rotating in to get the extra loot that's left over here. So both teams right now are looking absolutely set up. That's always one of the biggest things we talk about, right? Of course, the vault is so powerful and you want to get there first so you can get the supply drops and get the launch pads. But if you can roll through afterwards, things ain't looking too bad. In terms of, like Reese is saying, who's going to get it game to game? Well, people don't actually realize, shout out to Kitch Analytics on this one. In terms of the spawns, it's basically 50-50 how which side of Command Cavern Gunner, the NPC, lands at, right? So game to game, it could go to the hands of either team. One game, Vino and Aqua will land on their side and they'll be the ones that get it. Another game like this one, Trippin and Thomas will be the ones with that fortune. Of course, 12 games we have in total. We'll see whether it actually does come out 50-50. I doubt it, right? There is so much variance. But whoever gets that gunner spawn the most is going to be the team that walks away from the final, most likely the happiest. Ebb and flow of the cavern and all the other team can do is follow up in the heels. I'm looking at something very specific. This is a this is a Shio deep dive analytic, right? It has mm. nothing to do with stats. Okay. Nothing to do with the players. My favorite type it's of analytics. My vibes, yeah? yeah. I just looked at Mr. Savage's name. Hold up, let's just watch Mappy and Flo's take men's out. Still in the zone, by the way. Shizo going down. We'll get back to the fields in a second. Him and Hen specifically, right? Have this bear in their gamer tag. Flo is hold up. Going down in 6 Whoa. HP for Mappy. He's taken out goals. It's just it, his feet made of rocks and stone. They can't be moved. We talked about how well he did last season playing with Clown. And he seems to be the same animal, but a very much different beast in this game. A 2v1 against two top players. Oh, they just my. Got sleeping. Look at the loadout. He doesn't even have much. He has nothing. Look what he's he has literally with. one man of the shotgun and a gray pistol and he drops down and makes it work that is absolute desperation manifested and, and just <laughs> idealized it's just working for the man i love that energy that is that is fncs winner type energy he's rolling with <laughs> i mean to win an fncs duos you need a teammate though and his was down so halfway there halfway there very much not just halfway a very long way <laughs> yeah, so true. many games <laughs> we are just in game three of 12 but a team that has very much impressed so far, Aqua and Vino. Again, I hyped them up earlier because in many people's eyes, they are the de facto favorite team to win up the whole of the FNCS. But things are never as easy as they seem and we're seeing that already here, the chunk splashes will keep Vino in the game. But DKS and Bad Sniper hitting some big, big shots. Another team that hasn't had the hottest of starts over at Tilted Towers but it's considered a huge favorite by many as well. I mean, they're cold inside the zone in this one too. Like nothing in terms of utility on either player. Bat Sniper hasn't popped a single heal and is still running right now. So I assume DKS is about to pick him up and take him in. Med miss and it just looks like shambles on this side for Vino and Aqua. They're about to run into what might be another player as well. Nah, just an AI possibly to get some loot from. No, it is the Sipdos that's hiding. One point, they have so much control of this bottom side on both these games that just started up. And the third one, Reason down, the Sipdos out of luck. Yeah, the Sipdos and Reason, a team that has all the firepower and name, but just haven't been able to exert that force on lobbies this season. Reno showing now why he maybe has been able to do so as he hunts down the Sipdos. The Frenchman has no place to hide, no place to run. And the time not ticking in his favor. Had to hit a bigger shot than that. And even if you'd hit that shot, to get the finishing time for the Siphon was probably impossible. And so Vino and Aqua inevitably win the fight. But Queasy just went down in the feed. Again? I just caught Again? it. Again? I almost missed it, Shayo. <laughs> I almost missed it. I just caught it there. Queasy going down in the feed. In a zone like this, I think you're gonna need people like Queasy to, to, to figure out how to actually traverse things. Let's squeeze an Andalex with the earliest pad I've seen for a third zone. It's just, uh, this is actually a chain pad. Zone's been moving for a little bit. Then it's time to get straight onto towards these islands, straight all the way towards what is called launch pad inside the map. 
for Sash Valabuka struggling. So many teams, I feel like, have been in the zone for longer than they have been inside safety so far in this game. Yeah, but for some of these teams, the zone is their safety. You can see Malibuka Mustache with all those white heels, the floppers free, chug splashes as well. Taking some zone damage will not scare them one bit. They're going straight tropical paradise. Doesn't look like a vacation, though. You talk about irregular zones, mountains, you know, sometimes rocky, having nothing but flat land. I feel like this is one of the most difficult ones. And for a team like Malibuka and Mustache, a team that likes staying on low ground, looking for a lot of things to come to them, the pre-edit gods, you can't do that in the water. Yeah, that's one of the biggest risks we could see with this zone. I think the big thing for them is that they're going to have to choose to play on higher elevations of mid ground, use people's builds in their favor. But you always got to be careful, right, when you're on people's builds. Make sure you're coning your floors, you don't want to <laughs> get shot down. That's always a big risk. Clown and ref guard. Drowning. Yeah, we're already seeing the battle in the water. It's so difficult, it's so awkward, so uncomfortable. Look how much space they have to work with. It's a rhetorical question, they ain't got much. <laughs> ref guard, please, hit the edits, my friend. Needs to go up as soon as he comes up from the back. For there, though, so much pressure from all sides. Clown is down. Rest guard will soon follow. And they're not even close to the next zone. Taken out by Janice and Vortex. Another instance where we see Janice and Vortex lurking, preying on these teams that are just in these awkward positions. They always seem to be postured right, right there. <laughs> they're not the team that shambles. They're not the team in the super awkward position. But they're always just right there to capitalize when they need to. There's a, there's a pinch of cinnamon in the mix, mm. right? Doesn't really belong as the extra spice somehow just finds himself in every single recipe. And look at this one, watered down Levin. Everyone has to just move across one big island before that Thomas HD and Tripper and got to take a big dive. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they actually go about this. Again, another situation where you start looking left and right, trying to game your opponents, see if they maybe have a launch pad. If not, you might have to use your own. And we know that their team that will have them in abundance, potentially. Vino picking up some eliminations in the feed from some different teams. Kiko going down. Ju as well being taken out. And Abuka Mesash though looking in a much more comfortable position than what we saw before, but still having a distance to go to get to the zone. Very important game for them. Remember, they're fighting off spawn every time. And what you saw from the qualifiers, the games they live, they have to get big points from. So far though, already some big points, right? They started this game in 10th place already in third due to some eliminations. Look at this. And waiting perfectly for the used pad. They're able to make their way in. Danger from the left. They their way around. And again, right, landing on an elevated position and making sure to break some builds. It's actually Aqua and Vino below them. And oh, a 5 mustache! A monster, you need to be careful though. Vino's right behind you. 1 HP! Comes through on 1 HP. He's going to have to chomp on them floppers as quickly as possible. He almost got ahead of himself there. He hit the 185 onto Aqua and he thought, I want to get in. That's the instinct <laughs> from him. But Vino was thankfully waiting there, saving Aqua's life in that situation. But if they're hitting shots like that, Shio, this is going to be a scary endgame for anybody who wants to be on the same layer as them. A different tune of horror for the endgame as well. Imagine if it was Aqua controlling the skies. With that shot, they're going to be nice down for a little bit ready to go maybe in the seventh or eighth zone. And you can see Rabid Fanayan doing what many people will look to do, looking up above, lacking on the builds, but very much sharing the wealth is Fanayan as he drops them over. Ned pathway to having a good game. Looks tough, looks stunted, and we're seeing a drop down play here. No way. Art skill taken out, T-chips now as a solo. We talked about how ruthless Vino can be in a perfect display of that here. The reason this is even possible, a lot of these teams congested into coming into this zone. So many launch pads used left, and we're not going to see that much flying happening inside this endgame. So many mats already built apart. The zone comes in, in the land, where everyone's already congested. The box fighters, the Vinos, that's where they thrive. Aqua makes the call to drop down. He gets the pick. So important, too, because he took that 185. Yeah, the refresh at this stage in the game will be pivotal for their high ground takes, right? We saw in previous games how so many of these teams will take height, invest so much into it. They don't have anything left once they have it. Those guys, though, hopefully will be very, very resourceful. Malabuka and Masashto aren't necessarily a team that's going to be looking towards that, but still a team 
that has so much elimination potential. They're watching just the pressure, the chaos of the lobby just come to them like a tsunami off the shores. Many teams just moving side by side. Nebs taken down in the title forces. He's not going to make it. A launch pad forced up by Taysom and Chapix. They start to move. Rustache finds one. Siren now down. Janice and Vortex starting to move in as well. Surge is not really something that they concern themselves with. It's just the position. And Zone is now clapping back to the third party of just maximum <laughs> damage walls of proportions. They are down. Could not make it in. Look at the status of this. And that's exactly what happens, right? A max distance zone where you don't have a launch pad. All those teams on that side having to tarp their way in. They were at the very back and they weren't prepared. And so they go down. These are the moments that are just so, so pivotal in games. Can you make something happen? Can these guys make something happen? They pull zone and they posture towards height. Tayson looking up on the other side at Fury. Nah, uh uh. You guys better not come anywhere near it. I mean, they padded for this position specifically. They wanted to get here super fast. So I'm assuming they're not giving this up. They're holding fifth to the end. That's impossible. It's very difficult, isn't it? You need a lot of materials and a lot of willpower to do so. Mustache. They're still going. Up elimination. It's Michael. And, and he's slapped in the he's face. Down. Oh, my God. He's done. <laughs> Malabuka down to just slivers of HP before the zone starts to move. What a best and good place to take this fight. It's where zone's actually pulling. Michael, the maximum defense man. He took down, what, two, three duos pushing him? Got Astro back in the game. Mustache Malabuka take him down. These guys are not the kind of team you want to run into. Look at this. At any point in the game, Zara going down. Will Darkies follow? It might just be the case. Chicho as a solo now. He has everything to do. We saw Trulex in this position. We need to see Chicho put on a big performance now. Zara and Darkies, they're the pirate kings of these islands. They land here. They live here. They're taken apart. Look at high ground now. Aquavino, they're back. 185 what? Right? Malabuka who? They don't care. All the way up on height. Launch Patman again. They're taking it over from Taysom and Chapix. They have an airdrop possibly as well coming down. But look at the bottom side of the zone. Look what's happening in the purple waves. It's Thomas HD, 20 HP. Going to be tough for him to really get things out of proportions from here, but he has even more Chuck Splashes to use. Lots of time to buy for the moment. Tripper and down. It's a solo clutch with multiple bodies of loot he gets to use. How about a solo clutch that we've seen him perform in before? So many players going down, and that alone is beneficial for Thomas as he stays in the game. So much placement being found. But on the mid-ground, Mustache and Malabuka. Another elimination. Mustache now has eight. We all give Malabuka his flowers, but in these moments, Mustache really shines. He knows there's players there. He wants to hit the shot, so he's feeling confident. Malabuka maybe tempering him to focus on the zone as he protects his back. But this is already a brilliant game. Ten eliminations and not many more can be done for the rest of the players on their layers. They've sliced through so many different duels, but now they have the kings of the dojo. Jason and chat mix up inside their lair. Thomas AC though, the lone Ronin, he gets chopped down, he's taken out. And you can see Aqua and Vino doing this again on height. Will they be able to hold on to it this time? That was the biggest issue they had last time round. But Sasha Malabuka needs to stay healthy if they want to continue to do well in this game. But that's exactly what they will do. A refresh probably going to be needed soon as Malabuka's down to just the wood. But you know Mustache will be right on it. Kami and Seti though, thriving on the low ground. All these teams on their established layers on a crash course to collide in at some point. Oh my goodness, Mustache and Malabuka. This time, it's Malabuka trying to catch up. You know we've given Mustache's flowers this game. He's like, wait a minute, 11. I'm still in the conversation. And they're going right at it. First place team now. They've taken that title from Aquin Vino. Those guys above, though, they need to start doing damage. They need to start picking up eliminations if they want to hold on to that crown. But the win is so much more important for them. You can see the zone going above the water. We talked about how tough this will be for everybody in the lobby. And so Malabuka, wow. to go back up. He just shot down back up in the blink of a moment and instant. If you missed it, it's done. If you missed Seti as well, I mean, he's kind of still alive, but it's all up to Kami to take the game all the way home. You can see Kami in the backside of the zone. It's so awkward for him. He's trying to find any sort of ground to stand on. But once he does find that ground, he might end up running into Malibu. Mustache. So many matches for this duel. They just need to stay well tempered. I understand you're popping off. You have so many eliminations. 13 in the feed. Smash can't be stopped. On the top, just completely. Oh my gosh! One v two. Taste the traffic down. We've not seen something like this from Mustache in a while. But when it comes through, it's so delightful. It is brilliant. We saw a big game last time round. He's trying to top it this time. They're both up now. 
looking to try and win it all out in a 2v2 against Aqua and Vino. Two of the biggest names in this competition. Two favourites going at it. They've already cashed in this game, but will they be able to repeat? Mustache being slowed down. 65 HP. Malabuka now after here. Big shot. Mustache goes down. Malabuka in another cut situation, but no materials. And so a repeat of the last game. Aqua and Vino, the high ground team will prevail. Command Cabin producing so many monstrous teams in these games, Shio. What a game we've just seen there. Half of the Elims go to the command, the rest of the wins go towards the cavern. This is just too much to handle inside the end game. Vino started us off with some cool plays. Mustache and Malabuka though, 16 on the board. Who were the true winners of game number three? Who were the true winners? That is the biggest question. Of course, Akron Vino 